Wouldn't it be refreshing if we typical Americans had a political system we could call our own? A political system that was sincerely committed to the welfare of average Americans? A political system where those elected to public office respected you as a reasonably intelligent adult rather than assaulting your intelligence with meaningless cliches and poll-tested phrases? A political system whose president epitomized genuine leadership by honestly and forthrightly focusing our attention on the very serious problems facing our nation? I'm Mark Cirabella, founder and president of Citizens for the Common Good. We are a group of typical Americans, all of whom are dismayed, disturbed, sometimes exasperated by a political system that does not represent average Americans. Instead, the system represents the very rich, the large multinational corporations, the investment banks, the public sector unions, various special interests, and of course, the politicians. Collectively, this group constitutes a parasitical political elite that benefits from laws heavily advantaged in their favor, largely at the expense of everyone else. It's not surprising then that so many of us are dissatisfied and even frustrated with our government and the people from either party who run it. When millions of citizens desire structural change to a political system and elite controls, it's called populism. Currently, this populism in our country is expressed in many different ways. Millions of citizens express a progressive populism. Millions more express a conservative populism. Millions of other Americans classify themselves as independent moderates because their populist leanings do not fit comfortably with the elitist policies pursued by either political party. We maintain that the financial dependency both parties have on their major donors, the very rich, the corporations, the banks, the public sector unions, the special interests, makes the United States essentially a one-party country with two wings acting to absorb populist protest and render the interests of typical Americans ineffective. Breaking this two-party stranglehold over our political system and hence our country will require bringing to power genuine leadership at the presidential level from outside our current two-party system that will not be co-opted from instituting a strong form of direct democracy through national electronic referendum. When an individual citizen of character committed to typical Americans is united with the supreme political power in our country, we will be able to exert enormous pressure on our political system from both the top and bottom, thereby squeezing out the wealthy, corporate, and special interests. Only an individual expressing genuine leadership can be instrumental in structurally changing our country's political system so that it accrues to the benefit of average Americans and for the common good. Such an individual would be recognized by being nonpartisan, unaffiliated with any political party, expressive of serious thought and learning, free from any ideology, politically courageous, and an educator. Only genuine leadership such as this can offer credible hope of quickly reversing the sinking feeling in so many Americans that the American dream is fast fading into the American nightmare. But for genuine leadership to emerge, we must rally. We must create an environment in which genuine leadership can emerge. And we can go about doing that quickly by coming to recognize that all populists, whether expressed as MoveOn.org progressives, Tea Party patriot conservatives, or as independent moderates, have more in common with each other than with either political party. The differences that remain pale in comparison to the task of saving our country we must recognize the great truth that every American of goodwill in our hoped-for coalition is seeing an aspect 
to the ultimate answer of a social problem from the perspective of each individual's own experience. And only through cooperation with each other can these various aspects of the answer be pooled to form a better answer than would have come from any individual contributor. Our first presentation, entitled America Needs a Third Choice, is an expanded version of these introductory thoughts. Our second presentation, entitled Disillusioning Ourselves, exposes the colossal farce of our political system and confronts the sober reality that we typical Americans have a serious problem with the very existence of the Republican and Democratic parties. Our third presentation, entitled Empowering Ourselves, contends that the only way we can end control of our government and society by the very rich, the large corporations, and all the special interests is through a form of direct democracy through national electronic referendum. Nothing else has any hope of doing the job. Moreover, it is our birthright, under popular sovereignty, to begin exercising it, whether or not the powers that appear to be fully approve. Our fourth presentation, entitled Politics Without Partisanship, argues that the growing partisanship in our society is really a measure of the growing frustration ordinary Americans have with the political system, their government, and the politicians, but that with the exercise of a little goodwill by all sides, we will find we have more in common with each other as citizens than any of us have with a political party or a rigid political ideology. The heart of our organization is to recruit a few million typical Americans in a social network, each willing to pledge a future contribution of perhaps $25 or more to a true nonpartisan citizen presidential candidate if a sufficient number of others did also. If just four million patriotic Americans, just over one percent of the American population, made a pledge of twenty-five dollars, one hundred million dollars would be made available to begin an independent campaign devoted to the common good of all Americans. Can anyone doubt that a credible third choice, completely funded by typical Americans, would be irresistibly attractive to millions of other typical Americans who would contribute to and vote for our candidate? Our fifth presentation, Citizens on the March, explains the process we envision for accomplishing the objective of breaking the two-party monopoly by denying either corrupt party the presidency through the election of an independent nonpartisan citizen who, from personal experience, understands what it is like to live the life of a typical American, and who, by the exemplification of character, will make the common good the sole objective of our government. Citizens on the March further explains our tentative method for how we will select our candidate and why we believe it must begin at the presidential level. All our presentations on various areas of national public policy constitute our effort to demonstrate genuine leadership and to lay the intellectual foundation for a grand populist coalition so that we can stop foolishly fighting among ourselves in a burning house. Each presentation is broken into various sections. You can watch or listen to a presentation in its entirety or select various sections. The full presentation can be read or downloaded as a PDF document, and each presentation is accompanied by a one-page summary. On behalf of Citizens for the Common Good, we hope you decide to join with us, because America needs a third choice.